Mario, how do you, where do you pull your uh, creativity from? Like, where does it, like, where do you have to bring yourself in order to really find your spot? Like, where do you go? You know where I go, man? I just need some music. And for me, it's about just a feeling, you know, like sometimes, you know, like, uh, you know, some designers, you know, they'll do like a hundred sketches to get to one. I'll be honest with you. I like to start with one sketch and then just keep on refining it, you know, just kind of mm. digging into it and then to like, you know, perfect it, you know? So, um, yeah, it, to me, it's just about a feeling, you know, I look at it and if it looks right, then it's good. You know, if it doesn't look right, then I keep on sketching at it. You know, I keep on sketching, you know, so just some music and just having that right feeling, you know? So I'm sure when you, when you get into that, you get that confidence, you know, at what point do you say, Hey, you know what? I can do this on my own. I, you know, I want to go out and create my own shoe brand and, or I want to go out there and do this on my own. What, you know, what point do you get that extra confidence to, Hey, and why do you decide to do it? So, you know, um, it's, it's crazy because, you know, and then I, I'll say one more thing before we move off of Ralph Lauren, because I'm glad you oh, said that. You know? Yeah. So the, the, the good thing about Ralph Lauren too, is like, you know, my experience in the corporate world as a shoe designer was short, but very strong, you know, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, but you know, so, you know, one time I remember, you know, and I'll finish off with this a rough one, but I remember one time too, um, the president, Leslie Smith, she's like, Mario, um, come to my office, you know, I want to have a meeting with you. And I'm thinking, I'm like, man, you know what, you know, what happened, you know, something's, you know, what, you know, this and that. So I go to the meet, I go to the, her office, she sits me down and she's like, Hey, Mario, listen, as, as, as a division, we're not doing too good as a footwear division. But your shoe designs are like selling out like crazy. You're pretty much holding this together, you know, with my designs, mm. you know. And I, I never even knew that. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like. Do they, do they show you the sales, Mario? Do yeah. they come to you and say, here's, nah, the, but I, here's the units and all that stuff? No, nah, they never That'd did. But I'll tell you one thing they did show me, Brian, because of that. So I know I was doing good. So she calls me in. She calls me because it was Christmas. She said, listen, nobody else is getting a bonus check. Don't tell anybody, you know, but you're the only one that's going to get a bonus check. And she hands me a check for $10,000. Wow. Wow. But I was like, $10,000? I've never even seen that much money in my yeah. entire life, you know? So so she hands me a check for $10,000, and um, and the rest is history, man, you know? I'm talking to the guy that designed a shoe that millions of people are wearing right now out <laughs> there in the world. Like, that's pretty dope, Mario. That's you know what? I, I, I appreciate that, man. I, I really do, man. I appreciate that. You know, like I said, you know, I had one shoe. Well, you know, the Trail Runner 2000 became a famous shoe, but I had another famous shoe that was more famous than that called the Mask. And that, that shoe right there, it saw sold in the millions, you know, and just one it was the first time that ever happened for Ralph Lauren. You know, and it was a canvas shoe. And a, I mean, the thing that could get fast enough, you know, so. So Mario, do you have to, when the oh. new fashion comes out, are you adjusting to the to the product and the fashion? Are you saying, hey, you know, how do I adjust to the new times and how do I get ahead of what people are looking for? What's the new craze? You, you know, you know what? Companies do that. You know, they just follow whatever the trend is, man. I've never done that. You know, like if I design something, it has to be the best, you know, and, it, you know, and it can't look like anything else, you know, so. I, I definitely don't look at, you know, what's hard or what's trending or whatever. I try to like, just think, you know, what you said, think outside the box and then just create something that doesn't exist yet. After having, after being at the, at the height of my career, you know, um, I ended up moving to Miami and I hit rock bottom, you know, I hit rock. When I tell you that I hit rock bottom, I mean, I hit rock bottom. I went from like, you know, a young kid, you know, 26 years old, making over a hundred thousand dollars a year, traveling all over the world, mm. meeting Tommy, meeting Ralph Lauren, you know, having all this success, then moving down to Miami. And like I said, I hit rock bottom, man. I mean, I had to like pretty much start my life completely over. Um, it was another depressing time in my life, you know, cause I spent maybe three or four years of like no money, you know, no job, you know, I mean, I was doing electrical. I was doing, matter of fact, right after Ralph Lauren, I went to go work with somebody in electrical, making ten dollars an hour in the mm -hmm. snow. You know, so I, I went from like you know a business, you know, behind a desk to just and not that it you know that doesn't mean anything, but it just happened that fast, man. You know, and I, I got my first pair of Timberland boots and I was pulling wire. <laughs> I mean, I lost everything fast, you know, and um, and you know, so after Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren, after all that success, man, I ended up hitting rock bottom, you know, and that was probably. The hardest time of my entire life, you know, was that point in my life, you know, and having so much success, you know, coming from nothing 
and then having so much success so fast and then losing it all like fat even faster you know and um so that's what happened after Ralph Lauren, man. You know, I made, I made, I guess, in my career, I made a dumb move. I went from Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren, when I was designing shoes that were outside the box, you know, designing outside the box to a company, you know, called BBC that ended up, you know, they ended up firing me after 10 months. But, you know, the type of work where, like, you know, they would just come up to me, give me a shoe that's already existing in the store of a picture and say, you know, Mario, trace this and send it to the factory so they can make the same exact shoe. So you're pretty much copying what's already out there, you know? And, um, and so, I, I said that was my yeah, career, you know, was going from like a top end, you know, shoe designer to like just coming down and, you know, just settling for, you know, whatever I got. And I ended up there and 10 months later, I got fired. So why did you, so what happened with Laura Florent that you ended up over at uh, BBC? Was that how you just left? You thought it was something better or did you think you had more of a artistic to be able to share more of what you had or? No, nah, I, I say like a rough Florent, I say that I was the only one that, survived Armageddon, you know, because anybody who knows that, you know, the fashion industry is tough, man. They call it like a revolving door. You know, people get hired all the time and get fired. So by the time I started that job to the, to the time I left, I had like maybe seven different bosses, you know, and by the time I started, there was a team that I was working with. Halfway through, there was another team. Then halfway through, there was another team. And I'll be honest with you that, you know, they wanted me to move to New York to kind of promote me, Ralph Lauren. But by the time I was there, they had already hired guys from Reebok, you know, who didn't like, you know, the footwear designs we were doing. I was doing a Ralph Lauren and they wanted them to be more like New Balance, you know, like, you know, like, and that, that, that's when I knew I didn't want to be there no more because now we're trying to look like somebody else, you know, and, um, and I knew that was the end. Then at the same time, you know, this other company promised me the world to only fire me 10 months later. So that's the good thing about it. It's the journey. We like to talk about the journey, right? It's people at the high times and at the low times, right? right. Because not everyone, not everything's high. So when we listen to a podcast or any type of show, people say, well, it's always the high. We want to talk about the high. We want to talk about the low, right? What, you know, how did you, you know, you hit the low and then you fight, you fight your way to get to where you are. And that's the good thing. And that's what we always want to hear. Like, how did you take the next step to get out of that low and, and move on? So 2002, I moved on to Miami right after the height of my career. And I, like I said, I hit rock bottom, man. I, I, I moved down here. Couldn't get me a job nowhere. I mean, I went, I went everywhere looking for a job, couldn't get me a job at Home Depot, uh, nowhere. You know, I would go up to construction sites, you know, to like, you know, look for a job. There was no shoe companies down here. And back then the internet was just starting to take off, you know. So, um, so you know, I, I come down here and I was just completely lost, man. You know, and like like I said, two or three years. Honestly, I, I, I didn't have like $10 in my pocket for like three years. You know, so, you know, after making all that money traveling and then to coming down here, just losing everything. So anyways, make a long story short, um, I ended up moving, you know, like to Florida and um, I started a painting business. Actually, I, I didn't even start a painting business. What happened was my mother-in-law bought a house down here and I ended up moving down with my wife and um, she bought a nice house. And in that community where she, you know, where she bought the house, there's like 1500 homes, but back then it was brand new and they had like maybe like 30 model homes, you know, you would walk into these homes, you know, like they were like beautiful mansions, you know, like they were staged, you know, and they had crown mold and everywhere. It looked like magazine stuff, you know, like, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, so, I mean, beautiful, beautiful homes, you know, my wife and I would go all the time and, you know, like I said, they had furniture. So my wife and I would just kind of lay in the beds and like, <laughs> oh, can you imagine one day we buy a house like this? And like, you know, so then after going there like a hundred times, you know, with my wife, cause I had nothing else to do. I couldn't get me a job nowhere. I told my wife, I said, you know what? I can probably do this kind of work, you know, but like the crown molding and stuff, you know? And um, so my mother-in-law's house actually became my practice house, you know? So I couldn't get me a job nowhere, you know? And, and she loves that kind of stuff, you know? So her and I were at Home Depot like four or five times a day. They already knew her by her first name and we're buying crown molding, you know? So, you know, at, at her house, I'm doing crown molding everywhere <laughs> and I'm doing like these nice wall designs that I saw like in the model homes and you know, so the cool thing about it was my design background kind of came back a little bit, you know, and I never knew that I can do this stuff. I never knew that I can do this stuff, you know. And hard work. I'm telling you guys, man, I would be at the beginning, I would be like on a, on a, on a 30 foot ladder on the side of somebody's house in this Florida heat. I'm not lying. I'd be crying, you know, like just like yeah. crying, you know, like painting and saying like, Mario, how'd you get yourself into this situation? Like, I was just beating myself up every day, you know, and I would really, 
I'd be out there just painting and crying, you know, like, cause I was in this hole that I couldn't get out of. And it wasn't for like, you know, two or three or four years. This is like for like maybe three, four, five, six years for like a long time, mm. you know? So, you know, like I said, I started painting in the business and I mean, painting in the neighborhood and, you know, I started with just painting, but then fast forward now, you know, like I've done like custom home movie theaters and people's homes. I've designed dance clubs. I've designed, you know, restaurants, you know, and, um, but it took a lot of hard work, you know, like a lot. It wasn't like that, like that at the beginning, you know? And um, so, that, so that's pretty much it. But I always kept my little hustle inside. I kept a little website up of like a shoe design. So if you looked at my website, you would think that I was like a famous designer, but I really wasn't. Mm. Man, I was down here struggling, man. I was down here like at my bottom, you know, and and I'd be up on a ladder, true story. I'd be up on a ladder and I got a freelance uh, project from um, a company called Lugs. You remember Lugs? Mm-hmm. So they, there was a Miami shoe show down here one time. And I said, you know, I found out and I went down in my portfolio, you know, to just walk the show. I had an old Tommy Hilfiger card. I was nervous. I'm like, they're not going to let me in, man, you know, but I make pretend I still work for Tommy. And I went in, they checked me in and I went and I walked the whole show and I went up to, um, you know, the, well, I went up to a bunch of people with like my little portfolio with some drawings in it. And the guy from Lugs really like, you know, like me talking to him and stuff. He's like, listen, if you do me um, a, a, a nice design or whatever, this and that, I'll show it to the owners of Lugs. And it's a true story, man. I, I'd be up painting like crying. I, one time I'm telling you, I think I was really crying. I was just... And I got a 212 phone call. And I was like, I know that's New York. That's New York. And when I picked it up, it was um, Jack Schwartz, the owner of Lugs. He called me oh. directly. You know, he's like, hey, listen, I looked at your stuff, man. You got some amazing work, this and that. You know, I want you to design some stuff. And meanwhile, I'm like, they're talking to him. I'm like painting on <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to him on the phone and I'm making a style like I'm some big shot down here, whatever. How that, how that paint job come out? Yeah. Dude, <laughs> I'm like, I'm painting, you know, like I'm glad, you know. And um, so That'd yeah, that'd be man. a perfect TikTok too. Oh, man. <laughs> it was crazy, man! I'm telling you guys, I've been through everything, man. You <laughs> you guys are making it happen. The thing is, I always say, you know, never give up. You know, and if yeah. and if and if you're doing something, even if you do it like for like five minutes a day, just do it. It doesn't matter, yeah. you know. Truth.